Take this little jacket off. I knew I should have done that at the very beginning. You might be cold out there, but there's like a warm wind blowing up here, let me tell you. Ready for an old hymn redone, and you know this too. Sit. 
sometimes nights come in and come in soon. It may be evening, morning, no end new. There'll be a wedding of the bride united with the groom. We shall see the king when he joyful noise into the Lord, right? Amen. You're the source of my strength, the source of my being. I will put my trust in you. source of my strength, the source of my being, and I will put my trust in you.
shadows has fallen on us, Lord, I just pray that your sun would shine. Where you are, darkness cannot exist. shaken and stirred can be calm and broken for my regard through it all through it all my eyes are on you through it all through it all it is well through it all through it all to believe even when my eyes can't see and this mountain that's in front of me will be thrown into the midst of the sea through it all through it all my eyes are on you through it all
us to honestly say that this morning. If we're truthful to you, there's a lot of times we don't feel like it's well with our soul. There's a lot of times we're down or frustrated or grieving or anxious or whatever the case may be, and we don't take time to ask you to comfort us. We don't take time to stop and listen to that still soft voice. We don't take time to to recognize that you are there with us, covering us, encouraging us, giving us strength. God, I pray that we would learn that through life in any circumstances, no matter where we're at or what's going on, it it is indeed well, Father God. Lord, you have only our best in mind. You Lord, you you long to see us do well, be well. God, help us to trust in you with all of our heart. Father God, I lift up a few specific people to you this morning. Lord, I think of Faith Bishop, who is tested positive for COVID and is home struggling. And Lord, would you minister to her body? Would you bring healing and wholeness? Lord, we are so sick of hearing that word COVID. God, would you just clear it out in Jesus' name? Lord, we pray for Carmen, who is here this morning, but dealing with such pain in her back. Lord, would you just minister to her even now would you touch her lord would you bring healing and would you just course through her veins let your holy spirit touch those nerves and those muscles lord would you father god just bring complete healing and wholeness in the name of jesus and lord of course we lift up to you this morning the rios family the passing of heather's mom lord we just pray that you would bring comfort and encouragement to them, or that you would minister to that whole family, Lord, that this would be uh, a time that they can draw closer, that they can celebrate her mom's life, that they can, Lord, look to the good that you have done in and through their lives, Father God. Would you bless them and encourage them and speak to them? Lord, some of them perhaps need to be drawn back to you. Would this be a time, Lord, that your Holy Spirit moves and speaks and comforts and encourages and ministers to? Lord, I just pray that your hand would be upon them in the days and weeks that follow. Encourage them, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray this morning that our hearts 
Lord, would be soft before You, would be ready to hear, to receive, or that we would allow You to speak to us, that we would be still enough and quiet enough to listen to what You're saying. Lord, we would be true to ourselves and to You and to really listen, Lord God, and apply Your Word in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. We are taking a look at a pretty in-depth prayer that is offered to us in Scripture. You can open up to Psalm. We'll get there in just a minute this morning. The Psalms, the book of Psalms. We'll get there in just a minute this morning. But this is a prayer that asks God not only to examine our lives, but to examine our very being, our very soul, our inmost thoughts, desires, actions. Are we who we think we are? Are we who we portray ourselves to be? That's a huge one right there. There's so many people like to put on masks or paint pictures of themselves. You don't believe me? Just look at social media. Everybody is absolutely 100% perfect on social media. Looks, attitude, thoughts, desires, income, everything is perfect if you believe Facebook and Twitter and all those other social media platforms. And that's just not the reality, is it? So are we who we portray ourselves to be? Whether we understand this fact or not doesn't change that it's a fact. And that's that God knows us better than we know ourselves. We can argue that, we can debate it, we can discuss it all day long. It doesn't change the fact that it's fact. God knows us better than we know ourselves. That's hard to grab onto. That's hard to believe sometimes. That's hard to allow it to get through our thick skull, as they say sometimes. But it's the absolute truth. He knows every single detail of our lives from the moment that He knit us together in our mother's womb to today, to tomorrow, to the end of time. He knows those details better than we do. And this prayer that we read last week, we'll read again here shortly, this begins to help us understand that concept we begin to realize just how awesome and incredible God is as we look at these words and study them for a minute. How much He loves us. How much He cares for us. How much we mean to Him. Now throughout Scripture, we know there's 66 books. There's, there's a bunch of texts for us to read, but there's only a handful, a couple of prayers that really go this deep in Scripture for us to grab onto. They give us a glimpse of, of this relationship we have or are supposed to have with our Creator. One of them is in the book of Job. You all know the story of Job. Job was tested, Job was tried, and Job came out victorious. But throughout that book of, of uh, Scripture, Job has a pretty in-depth conversation with God. Who am I? How have I been made? How do you know? I mean, it's just, it's pretty deep. And then, of course, there's the Scripture that we are reading, which is Psalm 139, written by David as he was directed by the Holy Spirit. But it came from that intimate relationship that David had with his God, with his Creator. And it's through that intimacy that David is called a man after God's own heart. He's got that really tight relationship. David talks about confession here. Confessing who he is. Confessing what God knows. Confessing the fact that God knows him better than he knows himself. So let's read through this text together this morning. And then we'll talk a little bit more about it. 
Psalm 139. O Lord, You have searched me and You know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, You know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in behind and before. You have laid Your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to obtain. Where can I go from Your Spirit? Where can I flee from Your presence? If I go up to the heavens, You are there. If I make my bed in the depths, You are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there Your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created me in my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. If only you, God, would say to the wicked, O God, away from me, you bloodthirsty men. They speak of you with an evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord, and abhor those who rise up against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is an offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Last week, we talked about this particular psalm of David's and we talked about the fact that most of the time it's broken down into four sections or four paragraphs we talked about the first one a little bit last week which is verses one through six and it talks about the depth in which God knows each of us personally if you've not listen to that yet, I encourage you to do so. It's posted on our website. It's on Facebook. Listen to that message. It gives us a little bit of a foundation regarding this psalm. Today we're going to talk about that second section, which is verses 7 through 12. I'm going to reread them quickly just so those few verses are fresh in our mind this morning. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from Your presence? If I go up to the heavens, You are there. If I make my bed in the depths, You are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there Your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely darkness will hide me and light become night around me, Even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. In today's world, in our society, in our mindset, in our way of living, we we have this idea that we live by. And it sounds a little bit like this. How much can I get away with? How much can I get away with? How far can I push the boundaries? 
how much can I stretch those borders and, and still be okay? How much can I push my teacher? How much can I push my boss? How far can I push my parents? How much can I get them to let me do? I'll just take one more step and see if they're still okay. Even in our friend circle, how far can I push my friends? before they're going to say something or before they're going to have an attitude with me or whatever. How far can we push? How much can we get away with? We even take that concept to the legal side. Well, how much of the law can I distort and still not break? How much can I bend or twist this a little bit? But it, it still applies mostly. It's, it's okay. I found this little loophole or this... How far can I push it? Even in relationships. How much can I convince my boyfriend or my girlfriend or whoever to do or to be? Or how far will they go? How much can we get away with? We like to push and push and push and test the limits of those boundaries, don't we? And most of the time, we do it in the cover of darkness. Now what I mean by that simply is we just don't tell anybody that we're doing it. We don't advertise our true motives. We don't talk about what we're actually trying to get away with. We don't come up to somebody and say, hey, I'm going to try to push you as far as I can and see where you snap. We don't do that. We try to do it secretively or, as I said, in darkness. Sound familiar there a little bit? Let's push and push and push. Until, oops, i got to stop. We might be able to get away with a lot of things with our friends, with our family, with our bosses, with our parents, with our teachers. We can get away with a lot of stuff. We can fool a lot of people. But trust me when I tell you that God is not fooled by our well-planned deceptions. We're not pulling the wool over His eyes. We're not tricking Him and making Him think we're up to something else. That's simply not the case. Remember, he knows us better than we know ourselves. And if He knows us better than we know ourselves, He certainly knows when we're trying to push the limits. Understand that God is always with us. Always. Always. We have another problem in society, and that is we... I'm going to say, in a sense, glorify the spiritual. And I don't mean that in a good sense. You know, we, we want all these shows that deal about the paranormal or the supernatural or, or talk about all of these spiritual things. But if somebody were to ask us about a spiritual reality, we would say, oh, no, that doesn't exist. That doesn't happen. There is so much we don't understand about the spiritual reality that exists around us. And even in our relationship with God, we don't always think about the fact that He is here right next to us right now. That, that chair next to you is not empty. God is with us. His presence is in this place. His hand is on us. He is with us no matter where we go. We cannot hide. We cannot run away. There is no place we can go without Him seeing us. The very first verse in this section of the psalm, what does it say? Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? 
I dare you to try to come up with a place. Where can I go? Where can I flee? You know, this is not a brand new concept or a brand new idea. We actually learn about this way back in Genesis. You remember that book way back at the beginning? There's a couple people in there you might have heard of before. They're called Adam and Eve. First people God ever created. Back then, Adam and Eve did something very silly, which has lingered for all generations. They, they did something against God's command. They sinned. They ate that forbidden fruit, right? And after that happened, do you know they tried to hide from God? In this garden, in this place that God created, this perfect place that God created, they said, oh, God won't notice if we go hide. Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. The man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden of the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Imagine that mindset. Oops, we just messed up. Let's go hide. That was what went through their head. Now, if you know the, the whole scenario about this, there's uh, the next verse Sounds like maybe God didn't know because God says, where are you? He asks them. He says, where are you at? How come I don't see you? Where are you? God didn't know. God didn't not know. God knew where they were. His question was a rhetorical question. He wasn't asking them because he didn't know what was happening. God knew exactly what, where they were. God knew exactly what was going on. He was trying to make them think, what have I done? What do I do from here? He was trying to get man to admit his guilt and to confess, I did wrong. Help me. Adam and Eve thought if they hid, if they remained silent, that maybe God will just overlook it and move past them. Oh, sh maybe he won't know. Okay, we're good. No, there he is again. They tried to hide. But you and I do the same thing. You know, if I, if I go here, God won't notice. If I go there, God won't notice. If I don't actually say it, I just think it, God won't notice. We try to do that stuff all of the time. We disobey God's command. We try to come up with some sort of justification and we think it'll all be all right because God won't notice. We have another example in Scripture. This one comes by way of Jonah. Jonah. God gave Jonah some instructions. He said, Jonah, I want you to go there and do this for me. And Jonah said, okay, no problem, see ya. And he took off and he ran because he thought God wouldn't see where he went. Because he thought he could outrun God. Because he thought he could get away with just leaving and God wouldn't track him down. I think we all know how well that went for him. Even though he thought he could run from God, even though he thought God wouldn't find him, we know that he wound up in the belly of a big fish because of his disobedience, because he ran, because he thought that he could hide from God. So David addresses this whole concept, this whole idea of trying to, to run away from God, trying to hide from God. And David does the same thing that God did to Adam and Eve. David asks a rhetorical question. Where can I go? Where can I run? He knew the answer. He wasn't expecting God to say, well, you can go here. He knew there was no place he could run and hide. And then he gives a little extra insight just to uh, kind of emphasize his point, if you will. David says, if I go up to the heavens, of course, you're there. But even if I make my bed in the depths, even there, 
you will find me. You'll be able to see me. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. There is no escape route that we can follow, folks. There is no way, no place where we will find a sign that says, go this way and God won't see you. Impossible. Cannot, does not, will not happen. There is no distance far enough to be out of the presence of God Almighty. It cannot happen. Not only does David tell us we cannot hide, he adds a little bit more to this. He says, I'll try to get away from God. Uh, uh, But even if I try to get away from God, you know what I'm going to find in the end? God's hand on me. Even when I thought I was running away from Him. That's exactly what happened with Jonah. Jonah said, I'm running, I'm getting out of here, I'm not going to do what God wants me to do. And God's hand was right there on Jonah the whole time. He protected him, he was leading him. He was watching over him. David continues and says, well, maybe if I can't outrun or can't go in a certain direction, maybe darkness will take care of it. Surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me. Even in darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day for darkness is as light to you. If you've read the end of the book through Revelation, you know there's Scripture and text that tells us that when we get to heaven, when that new heaven and that new earth uh, is created, there is no moon, there is no sun, there is no extra form of light. Why? Because God is all the light that we need. There is zero darkness within Him. Zero. Not even the cover of darkness am I out of God's sight because there is no darkness to God. In fact, let's let's circle back to Jonah for, uh, for another second or two here. Jonah disobeyed God. They threw him off a ship. You can read Jonah later on your own. They threw him off the ship. This big fish came up, swallowed Jonah. Now, first of all, understand that happened. This isn't a parable. This isn't make-believe. This isn't fairy tale time. That is a part of Scripture that is true and accurate. And if you don't believe that God can cause that to happen, you need to rethink what you know that God can or can't do. So this big fish comes by at just the right time, swallows up Jonah, and Jonah is in the belly of this whale or fish, big fish. Think it was dark in there? Think he was out of God's sight? Even in the belly of that fish, God still knew what was going on. God still knew where he was. God knew what was happening. He heard him. He saw him. He knew the events that were taking place in that fish's belly. Jonah 2, chapter uh, chapter 2, starting at verse 1. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. He said, in my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From the depths of the grave, I called for help, and you listened to my cry. There was no place that he was out of God's sight. There is no depth, no darkness, no distance that can separate us from God. Even in that shadow of death, if you read through Jonah, if you look at his time in the, in the belly of that fish, there's text that says he had sea re- seaweed wrapped around his head. Now to me, that kind of gives the, the picture of this being a desperate situation. Of this being a a life or death situation. He wasn't just sitting there hanging out for a while. This was a terrible time. And yet God saw him. God rescued him. God heard him. Even in that depth of potential death, God was still there for him. 
David gives us another picture of this. He talks about this in another psalm, one that we all probably have at least parts of memorized. Psalm 23, verse 4 reads, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Even in that shadow of death, God is there. God sees. God hears. God knows. God protects. God puts His hand on us. God is there in the darkest of night, in any situation, at any time, no matter what we think, or no matter where we might think we can run from Him. Jesus also gave us a promise about being with us consistently. In the Gospel of Matthew, again, most of us are pretty familiar with a little section of Scripture called the Great Commission. Go and preach the good news, make disciples of men, so on and so forth. But at the end of that Great Commission, Jesus says this. He says, Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Matthew 28, 20. I am with you always. Not I'm with you when you're hurting. Not I'm with you when you're sad. Not I'm with you when you're happy or joyful. Or I am with you always. Always. There is no redefining that word or changing its meaning. He is with us always. This portion of Psalm 139 should speak a couple of things to us pretty clearly. First of all, no matter what we think, we cannot hide from God. I can't begin to tell you how, importantly, how important it is to grab onto that, understand that, and hold tightly to that. You cannot hide from God. When Satan tempts you, which he will, when he tries to get you to do something dumb or make a decision you shouldn't make or go someplace you shouldn't go, you just simply need to remind yourself, whether I do it or not, God is with me. I cannot escape Him. He will see, He will know, He will hear what is going on. Because He is always with me. You cannot hide from God. You cannot travel far enough. You cannot go fast enough. You cannot get away from Him. You can fool others. I said that before. But you cannot hide from or fool God. Secondly, we need to know that no matter how deep a hole you think you are in, no matter how dark the circumstances look, no matter how bad things might appear to be, no matter how much you think you've disappointed God and you're on His bedside, that's simply not the case. God still loves you. He still wants you to forgive you and pour out grace and mercy. There is no hole deep enough. There is no place dark enough. There is nowhere outside of God's presence that we can exist. He might ask you to admit your wrong. He might look for you to confess, much like He did with Adam and Eve. He simply wanted their admittance of it. He might be waiting on you to do that, but you're not outside of His hedge of protection. You're not outside of His hand. You're not outside of His love. No matter what you think you've done or how deep a hole you think you've dug, God is with you. I mean, look at, again, Jonah in the belly of a big fish. Was he out of God's touch? Was he out of God's hand? Uh, Let's think about that for just a minute. We get the concept of Jonah being in the belly of a big fish. Okay, that's great. Where does that fish live? In the depths of the ocean. In the depths of... That fish wasn't hanging out on land. 
He was swimming in the depths of the ocean, and yet that darkness in that fish's belly, in the depths of the ocean, was still not out of God's purview. Still wasn't too far away. Still wasn't too dark. Still wasn't too deep of a situation. God was still there. David tries to help us to understand that, that we cannot hide from God. We cannot, we cannot hide from God. No place is dark enough. Can't run fast enough. God is with us all the time. And if we are going to mature in our walk, if we are going to mature in our relationship with God, we need to understand that. We need to make that a, 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 a permanent thought process of ours every day. God is with me today. May my decisions that I make today be pleasing to Him because He is there watching me. He is with me through this. When despair, when trouble, when, when hardships come, and they are going to come, I'm not walking this alone. God is here. God is with me. God will put His hand on me. He will guide me through this. Lord, help me to trust You and to walk with You through this. So ask yourself a couple of questions today as you meditate on Scripture, as you spend time with the Lord today, tomorrow, the next few days. Ask yourself a couple of questions. What do we think we are hiding from God? That's number one. Because if we think we're hiding something from God, it's time to admit it. It's time to confess it. It's time to ask God to forgive it. Because that can be a stumbling block in our relationship. That, not you and I's relationship, and your relationship with God. That can be a stumbling block. You want to mature, you want to grow, you want to get to know God more, you want to be more the, the person God has created you to be, then, then the base is to, to confess, to ask for forgiveness for all those deep, dark secrets you don't think anybody else knows about. Because God knows about them. So confess, first of all, to what you think you're hiding Second of all, never, ever, ever think you are without hope. Because that's just not the case. God is with you at all times, waiting to connect with you, waiting to be with you, waiting to hear from you, waiting to let, waiting for you to let Him guide you. His hand, His right hand is on you. The question is, are you allowing Him to guide you and direct you? and lead you? Or are you fighting it? Are you pushing against it? Are you rebelling? What is it you're doing? You've got to allow Him to move you and to guide you. You know, God is an almighty God. He's created everything. Why would, I, why would I have to allow God to do something in my life? God should just do it if that's what He wants me to do. That's not how it works, folks. That's why we pray. That's why we sing pray. God wants our surrender. He wants our willing heart. He wants us to say, yeah, God, you're right. I can't do it on my own. I need you. Yeah, God, this is beyond me. I need your help. He wants to hear that from us. He doesn't want to read our thoughts. He wants to hear it from us. There's something about speaking, folks. Speak out to God. Confess to Him. Tell Him, God, I know You're here. I know You got this. And with Your help, I know we'll get through. Lord, I pray that You would help me to trust You more and more and more. As we do that, I guarantee He'll help you. I guarantee you won't be disappointed. I guarantee God will prove Himself over and over and over again. Lord, I just thank you for your blessings, for your mercy, for your grace. Lord, I thank you that you are with us 24-7. Whether we think it or not, whether we understand it or not, you are here with us now. You walk with us wherever we go. You're sitting in the passenger seat as we drive. You are there all the time. God, help us to 
begin to understand the importance of that. Help us to understand how to how that changes the dynamic of our relationship and how much, Lord, closer we can grow to you, how much more we can mature in you. Lord, help us to get past our own finite thinking and understand what your word says and the truth of your word. Help us to accept it, Lord, to walk in it by faith, to trust in what you are telling us. God, I pray that you would forgive us of our sins. You would cleanse our hearts and minds. Lord, and help us to renew our walk with you. In Jesus' name, amen. this morning and throughout the week bring us back together again in Jesus name